morning, everybody. My name is Carol Brown. I am an urban fantasy author and a writer for Other World Inc. And I am here today to talk about goals. Ironically, I was actually going to do a video where I was talking about how I did with my quarter two goals, and then I ended up talking to somebody um, in my writing tribe about, you know, the goals and how to set goals. And I was reviewing an older video that I did where I was kind of talking about making goals, and I found that it was very lacking at the time. And then, of course, like right after that, somebody had come to me asking about how to make goals again. So, given given all that I decided that I actually wanted to um, redo the goals video um, but I wanted to use myself as an example about how to make good goals and all that so with that out of the way let's go ahead and move on all right so I do want to talk about my quarter two goals which are going to be the reference for the rest of this video to help kind of explain my points a little better so in my quarter two goals I had some success and I had some failure uh, I definitely was able to you know increase my subscriber count I was able to host the giveaways I did make progress on the wellkeeper saga and I did increase my reach on social media however I did not finish the draft I did not finish my novella uh, I did not finish the collab story uh, I did not attend a convention and I did not increase anything actually I made nothing on Redbubble <laughs> this quarter um, and when I was reviewing my goals this week I was kind of looking at this and going like what is happening why did I not make these goals like I should have been able to make these goals right well let's talk about that but first let's talk about why we should actually make goals so um, you should you know I'm when I'm talking about goals, I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm talking about goals um, from somebody who works in an organization. I'm also talking about goals as somebody who's been a teacher. And I'll tell you what, uh, two very different industries, but they have a very similar mindset when it comes to productivity. So um, in order to be productive, you do have to make goals. And goals are important because obviously there is the product productivity, but it also has proven to have increased growth. It allows teams and individuals to be able to focus more on an objective. It is also motivating and it also helps people stay organized. So, um, and when you work in teams, giving them goals to work towards is really important because you can say, you can give them a task and they'll complete the task, but if they don't kind of know what the objective for the task is, it's, it's going to change the energy of the group a little bit more. But this is why making goals is very important. Now, moving on, um, I want to talk about how to actually make good goals. So here I have an example of a bad goal and a good goal. So uh, I always use this, this goal as a bad one. Um, I want to lose weight. Okay, great. You, you want to lose weight. So the reason the first goal is bad and the second one is a good goal, it has to come down to uh, defining and giving yourself a deadline for achieving that goal. Uh, everybody wants to lose weight, but the, at this point, the, the first goal doesn't really talk about like how to do that, doesn't give yourself the deadline and all that. Now, I don't want to make this a presentation about the SMART goal acronym, um, but pretty much the second goal that I've written right here is going to follow this acronym um, when it comes to making goals and I really do want to kind of emphasis on the trackable and the timely because when I was reviewing my my reason for not being successful in some of those goals it was because I did not make them trackable and I did not make them timely now I do want to show you how to not have that problem um, but first before I dive into that one of the things I do kind of want to make clear is that if you are new to goals and you are not used to doing this uh, it's gonna take time um, I do you definitely want to start small and build yourself up you don't want to give yourself a lot to do because what will happen is if you because I know some people are kind of like well I want to give myself a lot to do so that way I can be more productive than if I've given myself a little bit to do the problem with that is if you dive headfirst into doing this and you're not used to it you're gonna get overwhelmed you're gonna get burned out and then you're not gonna get as anything done at all so I would advise you if this is something new that you are doing to kind of like start small and work your way up and keep in mind that habits take time to enforce and you will find that as you give yourself more things to do they will become easier to do uh, for example when I decided to start running for a marathon, I could barely run one mile, right? That, I, that was my struggle. So I had to build up the habit of running every day. And at that point, um, when I got comfortable with running one mile, I built it up to two and three. And you just it just takes time. You have to get used to it. And after a while, you'll find yourself running like, you know, five miles a day without even thinking about it. So let's move on. 
Now, the internet is full of examples about how to write goals and how to write SMART goals, but none of them are really kind of like author focused. So I went and wrote these three goals here. By the, so I'm just going to read the first one because I'm not going to read all of it to you. But one example here on the very front is by the end of the year, I will finish writing the first draft of my book by writing 500 words a day until complete, right? So I've given myself a time limit to finish this. I've said how I'm going to do it, right? So I'm finishing the first draft. I'm going to do it by the end of the year and I'm going to do it by writing 500 words a day. So so this is timely, it's specific, and it's also something that I can track. And not just track, but easily track. Alright, so again, these are the two other examples. Feel free to read them, but I don't want to do the whole read to you thing. Now, I would like you guys to learn from my, my mistake, and the best way to do that is to kind of explain. Now, in a minute, I'm going to switch to the spreadsheet that I use to track my goals, um, but I do want to go ahead and preface this with basically what happened that basically threw everything out of the window. So, um, I failed at the goals because I didn't account for college. Um, I was in a college class that was super time consuming, like uh, very time. It was just one class, but it took up about 90% of my time with the research and the writing and the correspondence and everything but the big thing that really screwed me over is that I did not chunk my tasks appropriately I had very like remember earlier when I was talking about you have to make things that are trackable when I wrote these these objectives and these goals I did not make them trackable so let me show you what I'm talking about now this is the spreadsheet that I used to originally create my goals and track them and the problem with this is that um, while I do have this originally set up with like, you know, these are the, the big business goals that I need to do and these are the strategies that I'm going to do, I did not write this in a way that made it trackable for the format that I have this spreadsheet set up. This is meant to track things that are done on a weekly basis, but some of these things are not weekly. So for example, I want to increase my pre-orders, right, to 300, well, I wrote giveaway. Well, what, do, what does that mean? Like, do I do a giveaway reminder like once a week? Um, and then right here where it's like increase my subscriber count you know I have engagement but I don't really define what it is that I need to do per week if that makes any sense what I really should have done is I should have written them out more like what I have here on this one where it's like you know do a weekly post on Facebook do it on uh, mention in Friday blog post uh, create two images a week so this this was one of the big problems that I had is that when I wrote these I didn't write them in a way that made it possible to track so I'm, I'm showing this to you guys because again this is the thing that I did wrong and I would really like you guys to learn from it so again just kind of reiterating that when you are going to chunk your tasks just make sure that you're doing it in a way that is trackable by however it is that you are tracking the, the progress, so, you know, if you're doing it daily, if you're doing it weekly, whatever, this, just make sure that you're doing that appropriately. I did not do it appropriately. I thought I had, and then, of course, in reviewing it, I was like, nope, didn't do that right at all. Um, and then I, I'm going to talk about chunking a little bit more in a, in a minute. I don't want to harp on it right now, but I want to continue on with the discussion I'm having in regards to why I didn't do very well. So, and the other, the big it's not really a big reason, but I mean, it, it kind of is. Um, by the time I got to mid-May, I was super burned out. And I wasn't super burned out because I gave myself too much to do. I was burned out because I was having a lot of drama when it was coming to the publishing of my book. Like, some stuff went down. It was not fun. That really, like, just put me out on a bad way and then I also had unfortunately a death in my family and that sucked a lot of out of me as well and now granted when you're making your goals and your tasks you can't really account for the stuff here on the bottom like life happens right um but you can't always account for life you know I mean this stuff just happens and I I think one of the problems I was having is that when I created my goals I didn't go back and adjust them for the issues that I was having at the time and that's something that I really should have done you know even though I was even though I knew I was burned out in the middle of May I was like well I'm still gonna press on I'm still gonna try and do these things and all I did was just kind of wear more on like my motivation and everything else so if you have things that happen that are you know are just gonna like rock your world take a moment to just go and look at your goals and be like just tick off the ones that you know that you just kind of like are not a priority so I said I was gonna talk about chunking and I am gonna talk about chunking because if you come back up here one of the failed objectives was finish the draft right that was that was my failed objective I didn't do that very well and the reason I failed at it is because I did not chunk it very well I literally wrote finish book right <laughs> um, so what I have done in this quarter and I wanted to share that with you is I actually went and I chunked the process of finishing the book and I'm gonna have I'm gonna show you the example about how I'm doing that but when I'm talking about chunking, I'm talking about taking a task and I'm talking about breaking it down into more manageable parts. Now, you can break it down into weekly and then you can break it down to daily if that's what you like to do. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody, you know, 
functions differently. I'm just kind of showing you various ways to do this. Now, the example I have right here is by the end of the quarter, I will finish self-editing my book by uh, identifying problem areas, addressing problem areas. The X is here just representing dates, if that's how you like to do things. Uh, finish read aloud by and doing the final edit. So what I've done here, and then under each of these, as you can see, I've broken it down even further by saying what I'm going to do on a daily basis. So here I have the main objective. I want to finish self-editing my book by the end of the quarter. And then I identify the things that I need to do in order to complete that. And then I break that down onto a daily process. Now, I didn't give myself due dates on this because this is just the example, but this is pretty much how if you want to chunk something you you need to figure out how you can do it weekly and then what you can do daily and the easier that you can make these things to do the more likely you are to be successful at it so i would like to direct your attention back to the spreadsheet um first off there is a copy of this spreadsheet down below in the in the video description if you would like it. Um, if you are a kind of person who can type up your goals and then you know kind of track them on a weekly basis, this is yours. Um, if you are the kind of person who doesn't like to put things on a computer all the time, one thing that you can do is you can fill this out and you can also uh, print it out and just post it somewhere and just kind of tick things off as you do it. Uh, one thing that I will do is I am going to leave this example tab um, right here for you guys that you can refer refer to. It's not going to say Kara's quarterly goals on it, but basically to kind of give you an example of how to break this down on a weekly basis. Now, um, if you are like me right now and you are in the middle of a book launch, um, you may find that this is not going to be as helpful to you as you would like it to be. The example that I would actually like to show you is me trying to write my quarterly three goals, right? So this was me trying to write my quarterly three goals. And then I started to realize that um, while I was trying to define my goals, like for example, finish this draft by writing 7k 1k a week until finished I, I started to realize that I need to do something that's gonna let me track everything that I need to do on a daily basis now if you know anything about me I am definitely an overachiever when it comes to organization um, and so I was trying to figure out the best way to accommodate what it is that I needed to do that wasn't like gonna like destroy my world and that led me to my kombachi board now if you're not familiar with the Kimbachi board, it works a lot like Trello um, in the sense that it's just basically a, an organization board or a workflow or whatever you would like to call that. Um, and I don't have a template to give you guys for this. Um, if you decide that you want to do Kimbachi, you're going to have to build it on your own. Um, but here's how I've broken it down. The first thing I did is I listed all the things that I wanted to do here in 90 days. Now I did give myself a lot to do, I'm not going to lie. Uh, mostly because I like to give myself a lot to do so even if I don't manage to achieve everything I still got something done. The only thing that I haven't been able to account for right now are my college classes because I haven't gotten those syllabuses so uh, these are pending depending on what's going on. But let me show you an example of kind of how this works. So let's see where's the weight one. So right here I wrote I want to get down to 145 pounds right. Um, I'm not gonna lie I put on some weight and I need to lose that weight. And uh, so what I did was I needed to get down to 145 pounds. I gave myself the due date of doing this by September 30th. Uh, so if I actually click on this, this panel right here is going to pop up. And in here I wrote basically the strategies that I'm going to do to help reduce uh, or help get myself back down to that that level of fitness that I used to have. Um, now these are the strategies, these are things I'm going to do. So at this point what I've done is I've broken it down further and I made a column right here it's for the monthly goals of things that I want to get done by the end of July, right? So by the end of July, we're still using the fitness example, I want to get down to 155 pounds. At this point in time, I'm 158 pounds, so I think getting down to 155 pounds is pretty reasonable by the end of July. Uh, same thing here in August, I want to definitely make sure that I am getting down to 150 pounds by that point so losing five pounds in a month is still realistic for my size and weight now at this point uh, now that I have broken it down into what I need to do versus what I have to dump do per month now I have to talk about what I need to do per day now when you give your if you decide to to do this make sure that whatever tasks you give yourself to do per day in relation to your goal are things that you can easily attain so one thing that I wrote right here is I need to run two miles a day. I easily run two miles a day. What I really need to do is start increasing that number up to three, four, and then five miles a day. Um, but for the time being, running two miles a day is really easy. I get that done in 18 minutes and I move on with my life. Now, I know this looks like a lot. It is a lot. I'm not, <laughs> I 
I mean, I'm trying to get stuff done and I have to, you know, focus on getting stuff done every day. But I, I want you guys to remember earlier when I was talking about making habits and when you do something for a certain period of time, doing it consistently, it's, it's not as hard. Now, uh, running is the example that I'm kind of using, but uh, for example, right here, the Twitter and the Instagram, these are two things that I'm not very good at. Um, but I know that if I keep doing it consistently for 30 days, this is going to be a lot easier to do. And at one point, I'm going to be able to take these off um, before even looking at it. Now, I know I'm showing you guys a lot of digital options about things that you can do in order to be productive. And not everybody is really into doing everything on a computer or having it attached to their phone. There is a product. Um, it's called This Is My Era. It's a little planner and it's based, it's, it's based on quarter goals pretty much. And... If you need something that's done on paper that you can carry around in a notebook, this is pretty much the thing for you. I, I have a copy of this myself, I just haven't had a chance to fill it out. It looks really awesome, actually, because I was really impressed with how they have it all broken down. Um, the only downside is, like I said, it's only made for the quarter, so uh, once you're done with that quarter, you have to buy a new one, which means that you would be essentially buying four of these a year. Uh, so that's, that's the only downside, but if you are the type of person that does need to have the physical copy in your purse at all times, this is the notebook that I would recommend to you. Whew, that was a lot of stuff. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and obviously ask you guys a question about what goal that you would like to work on for this quarter. And the reason I'm asking is because when we kind of say what it is that we're working on to a group of people, that kind of makes it more concrete in our minds that that's something that we are going to be working towards. And so I'm very curious about what you would like to work on, how are you going to do it, and what steps are you going to do. You can kind of take this as an opportunity to practice the chunking exercise that I mentioned. Uh, now, brings us to the end of the video. Uh, I would definitely like to thank you for watching. Uh, I really do enjoy it when you guys watch and you leave comments, and I really am just interacting with you guys in the comment section is something I really do enjoy doing. Um, now, I do have a newsletter that's coming out today. If you have not signed out or, or signed up already, uh, today's kind of a big day for me in the newsletter because I am sharing the first chapter of my book. So if you would like to get in on that and find out about it, the link's down below. Please feel free to. Outside of that, I give advance notice to a lot of things that are going on when it comes to my books and what I'm doing. There's free stuff in there pretty much every month just as a thank you for being a subscriber and listening to what I have to say. My book, Queen of Swords and Silence, is coming out on August 9th. Ah! I'm just oh, I'm so excited about this. Uh, the Kindle pre-order for that book is definitely up right now. Physical copy it, for the pre-order is coming soon. I'm just waiting on the formatting right now. Uh, if you do decide that you do want to do the pre-order, I do have a giveaway for the pre-order that's coming out right now. I have more details about that in the video description that you can read. And then, of course, last but not least, if you thought that this video was useful and you know somebody who could probably use some help with making goals, uh, please feel free to send this their way. I would definitely like to just help people. That's kind of why I make these videos but that's all I have to say today I really like to again thank you for watching again and I will see you all on Monday wait don't go I just just kidding I have one more question for you guys um I was doing the editing of this video and I had a question for you do you guys like the videos where I have the presentations and the video examples or would you rather just see my face and listen to me talk about things um, I'm just curious because I find the presentation videos easier to do but if you would rather see my face I'm gonna do what makes you happy so uh, please feel free to comment on that down below okay now now I'm gonna go thanks for watching I appreciate y'all